Hi Gladiators! I've been wanting to do a digital art project with you as part of our language arts uh, for a long time and I think we'll give it a try today. So the first thing you're going to need is this extension over here. So you're going to go to your Chrome store and look for Color Pick Eyedropper and it's going to look like this. Okay, once you have that done, we are going to open up a new slides. Okay, so I'm just going to go up and name this. That way I'll be able to find it later on. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is go up to File, Page Setup, and you can really set it to any size you want. Just go to Custom. Okay, but if you're planning on printing this eventually, you're going to want to pick a normal paper size. So um, something that goes into a printer is 8.5 by 11. That's the standard normal size of paper. Of course, you know you can go um, 11 by 17 as well, or you can swap these around and go 11 by 8.5. That's going to give you different page orientation. So apply that, and there it is. Okay, I'm going to get rid of these boxes. And get rid of this. Okay. Now we're going to start by inserting a picture um, as our inspiration. I'm just going to do a quick, uh, I think, landscape or flower or something to give you the example today. Um, but you'll want to put some thought into your picture, more thought than I am. So let's go with a... Okay, remember image search right here. And don't forget you have these tools here as well. Click on those and it gives you all of these options. You're going to want one that is um, pretty high quality. Usually the size helps with that. So a larger size image. Then you can choose color. Um, I like that purple one already, but let's take a look. Um, I'll filter by purple. usage rights. Um, as an artist, as long as you've altered the image, you can use it. Um, it's a little bit different than just taking somebody else's picture and putting it into your slideshow or your book or anything like that. Okay, so I'm actually just going to leave it set as this for now. Um, we'll go to type. Uh, I want any type. Um, time doesn't matter to me. And then you can clear all of your settings there. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little scroll and see. I'm looking for um, colors that I like. I'm going to copy the image and paste it into my slides. Um, the next step is to make some shapes. Just pick anything. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to put them over to the side here. I'm going to go with no line around it and then I'm going to go command D a few times that duplicates and then I'm going to set them all up. This is going to be my palette. Okay, so this is where my color eyedropper comes in. So I'm going to go up here and click on my extension. And it's going to give me this crosshairs. Now everywhere that I put this, it's showing me the exact color shade from the original picture. So I'm going to go through and pick out some of my shades that I like. This one, for example. So get your crosshairs lined up, click on it. It's going to give you the exact number of that color. So you're going to want to go Command C. Then you go up to your, oh, click on the X to get rid of the crosshairs go to your fill bucket go custom color and then command v to replace that um, the writing right here was already highlighted so i can just go command v and it will put in my copied color press ok and there's that color over here now i can use that as my palette later on because when i go to my fill bucket they're all going to be along the bottom here as my custom colors 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And let's make this a little bit bigger just so that when I'm done I can grab it on the edges really easily make it fill my page across okay and now you can see it's sticking out a little bit past the edge of the page that's so that I can put a whole bunch of stuff on top and still select this really easily okay now we get into some different methods So I'm going to go up here to line and select you can experiment with lots of these if you want okay and I'm going to start drawing a line around here it doesn't have to be exact I'm going to go for more of an abstracted look on my whole picture okay but I'm going to want to select a whole area of similar color so I'm going to pull it around here all the way back around and maybe down here and up to there Okay, because I want it to turn into a shape and I'm going to go through and add in another one so this time I think I want to do that shape okay and then choose my line I'll go a little bit lighter on that one and then choose my Okay, so you would continue on in the same way. I'm gonna jump ahead and show you what I ended up with in the finished product. And at the very end, what we're gonna do is just take this background picture and remove it. So let's see what we have so far. Go in here and take a shape. I think I would like to use a circle for this, and I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little circle. Okay, now with that circle, I am going to uh, again make sure there's no line, so transparent line on there. So I'm going to fill it with this color and then I'm going to duplicate it. Okay, and then don't forget you have Control Alt plus plus for super zoom, and that brings you in really close without losing all of your tools. Okay, so back over to my circles, and now they're a little bit easier to select. Okay, and I forgot to mention when you're making a circle, if I start building it, it can get all stretched out. If you press Shift and then move it, it locks it into a perfect circle. I'm okay with mine that are a little bit warped so I'm going to go ahead and take this one now over here and fill it with a different color let's do that one and duplicate that okay so I've got this little part filled in here now I think it's a bit of a different color so I'm going to grab some of these Some will go on top, some will go behind, that's okay. We're basically mimicking a paintbrush if you were doing a dot or a stipple effect. And the smaller your circles, the more time consuming this would be, but also the more accurate it'll be when it's done. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back out. And you can see that I've kind of painted on top of here. Just a little trick that I found when I was doing this one. If you take a few of these little dots and put them together, like over here, 
Then you can use the whole cluster all at once just by using that square select. Okay, and now that it's all selected, I can take the whole thing and move it over. So if I want some of this color down here, now that it's there, I can turn it by picking this dot here. And I can duplicate the whole thing, Command D. And then take the new one and move over to where I want it. It's quite a lot faster than doing each dot individually. If I was done, I would delete this background. And I'm going to see a lot of spaces in between that I couldn't see before. going to want to go fairly large here because you want little squares. Let's start there and see what we get. Okay, so I'm going to select that table and move it up to the top. And then I'm going to select a few rows. Right click or snake bite. In this method, you're actually going to be just filling squares with whatever color you think would look best. Okay, so let's select a square. Okay, and that little triangle tells me it's selected. And then I'm going to fill that square with this color. Okay, and then on to the next one. So you are going to take your curved line right here. I'm just going to do a practice one up here for you to see. So when I click, I'm going to leave a dot there and now I have this line that I can move wherever I want. I move to the next spot that I want to and then it starts to curve around. So you can do curvy shapes like this. You just want to make sure you connect it at the end by clicking close to your first spot and then it will be a shape which gives you the option to fill. Okay, so I'm gonna super zoom in. Okay, and make sure that I'm on my curve line. And I'm gonna go around this flower here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just dropping dots wherever I want it to move. Okay, and I have to get back up to my starting point again because that is where it's going to make it into a finished shape. Okay, there it is. So there's my completed shape and now I can fill it. Now, if you're going to do this whole shape like this, it's going to fill the whole thing. And you can see there's at least three different shades in here. Um, but I'm going to start by filling the whole thing. And I'm going to go with that dark color around the edge. Okay, now there's the whole shape. And I'm going to use my curve line again. Oops. There it is. Okay, and now I'm going to go around and do where I think that other shade would be. And using artistic license here, so again, not trying to make an exact copy of your photo. You're going to do it your own way. Okay, and then that one I want to be lighter, maybe this color. No, maybe this color. 
Okay, and I'm gonna move that one out of the way for now too. Then I'm going to go with one more on there, so curve line again. And I'm going around here, dropping dots as I go. Okay, and I was very careful going around this piece here on the first one, but there's actually no need for that because I'll add it back on top. Okay, this one I'm going to change to this color. Okay, now as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that it probably would be easier to go the other way. So start with your top piece, then your second piece, then your third piece, rather than the way that I've done it. So now I'm going to get rid of the line around it, transparent. Okay, same with this one transparent line and this one and then I'm going to put them back where I wanted them so this one right about there that one in there and then this one I'm gonna slide over just a little right there okay I'm gonna super zoom out and move this and you can see it's starting to look like a flower so I've gone ahead and done most of the flower I just wanted to show you on this stem part a couple of tricks that I figured out so I'm still using this curve connector line right here Okay, and I'm still looking for color spots that I think match. So in this case, I'm going to go along here. Okay, but when I get to this part that I've already done in a different color, I'm going to go up past it like this because it doesn't matter if I get that exactly right. Click back onto the end to join it up into a shape and then pick my color from here. I'm going to do that in the shade maybe. Yeah, I don't mind that. Okay, and I just went in here to get rid of that outline around the shape. All right, now it is covering up some of this part that I don't want it to cover. So what I'm gonna do is right click and send it backwards. To save myself time, I'm gonna send it all the way to the back. So send to back right here. Okay, now it's gone, I can't see it because my picture's in the way. So I need to go back to my picture and send it all the way to the back as well. And that puts everything in the right order. Now all of these pieces are on top of it like it should be. I'll just show you that again on this next piece. Okay, so I want to do this part here now. So these lines I already did carefully. I like the way they look. This is the only one here that I need to make sure I get properly. So I'm going to do it carefully and then I'm going to go right past this other one, make the shape a little bit bigger, join it together, get rid of the line, choose my color, and then send it all the way to the back, and then pick up my picture again, send it to the back, and there's my shape. I'm done the flower and I'm deciding not to do this flower or this bit or this one in the background um, just because I don't want to spend the time on it but you definitely could do that um, without a complicated background it can be more like a logo that you could copy onto letterhead or something like that if you wanted to leave it as its own piece of art as a finished piece you would want to do something with the background I'm going to go ahead and reveal and get rid of my picture so this picture that's been underneath it the whole time here we go okay and there's my flower 
Now I can change my background if I want, or I can put a shape around it. I like to have things sticking out of the background sometimes, so let me just see what this looks like. Okay, and I made that a little bit transparent. So if I go into custom, you have transparency controls here. And then maybe we'll do it just a little bit more. I want more of that white showing through. Okay, and then I'm gonna move this to the background 